just ready when you are, Steve. So my journey to understand the diamond conflict and the impact it had on me began many years ago when I got laid off my, high, my second high-tech um, high sales job. My self-esteem was at an all-time low, and I, as I walked out of the office with my personal belongings in my hand, it was clear that the universe had other plans for what I was supposed to do. I was confused, frustrated, and wasn't sure what to do. So to think it over, I took a quick jaunt to the top of a mountain. And quickly I realized that the hike actually took longer than it did to know that I wanted to be creative. Once off the mountain, I called a few friends, spent some time at the bar, spilling my emotions and frustrations with them. It didn't take long for them all to say to me that I needed to just suck it up and go for my passion. It was time to make a career change. And that's what I did. Soon after, I enrolled in a jewelry course to learn uh, metal fabrication and stone setting. And eventually, these new skills did get me work designing countless pieces of wearable art, and I finally felt like I was doing something I was meant to do. And it was awesome. But as time went on, I questioned the negativity I heard about the industry, and especially about diamonds. My mixed emotions began to swirl, and slowly I became conflicted with what I was going to do. And once again, I was at a crossroads and, didn't, and it didn't make me feel very happy. Before long, this movie came out. I figured that Hollywood had put some truth to it and that the events were somewhat real. But how real? After all, the movie was taking place in the 90s and here it was, 2006. I didn't think these things really happened once the truth was revealed, but I was wrong. There I was in a personal moral dilemma, and let's be honest, I liked what I did, but the battle raged and I was conflicted between my beliefs and my work, and especially when one of these beauties left the shop. So I decided I needed to learn more. Eventually, I enrolled into, the jewel, into a diamonds course which helped me understand the diamond process a little better. After being in the industry, I really only understood the manufacturing and retail side and I, I knew very little about the exploration or mining. What I learned and what I felt became two very different things. And as many know, diamonds come from deep within the earth in their raw form. They are then cut and polished to bring out their bril bril brilliance and beauty. It was the beauty I sold to newly engaged, recently graduated, or just because individuals to represent their special moments in life. But once the course was completed, I realized my feelings hadn't changed. Diamonds are not a girl's best friend, and my ever-rising questions made it difficult to sell diamonds with a clean conscience. And if I was going to sell a product, I must believe in that product. And since I no longer believed, I found myself once again at a crossroads. So I quit. I quit selling diamonds and I quit designing. And as I dug deeper into the diamond world, it became clear that the industry just wasn't up to par. And I couldn't understand why armed guards or children were needed to mine. Most of all, it didn't make sense, and I no longer wanted to be associated with it. So for the next four years, I researched diamond mining and the effects it had on local regions as a thesis topic. I compared the history of mining to the modern ways of mining and I looked into how lives were affected and who was being affected by them. And I didn't like what I found. It became very apparent that the diamond conflict wasn't over, not even close. Poverty-stricken individuals were still the ones mining and doing so for minimal pay, and oftentimes for nearly only a dollar a day. Children were not attending school and the illnesses were on the rise. And besides the mainstream media reporting on the conflict, there were a few humanitarian organizations who fought to implement ways to keep the children out of the mines and to keep conflict diamonds out of the world's market. But after 10 years, efforts had failed. Children went back to the mines and the diamonds flooded the market. Slowly, the majority of the efforts diminished. The reality of it all, was that the governments of the mining regions had to make and keep the difference and the change. But the value of the diamond far outweighed the lives of those who actually did the mining. 
So how was change going to happen? How could it be done? Here are a few ways. First, we can look at it to our neighbors to the north. They specialize in conflict-free diamonds and humanitarian awareness, two things that can and do work well together with very minimal effort, lessons that industry should learn. Another option is to choose a diamond alternative. Basically, these are lab-grown diamonds um, that are grown similar to the way Mother Nature does. They're bril they're, they have the same beauty and the same brilliance as a real diamond. And if you can't tell, then I shouldn't. <laughs> and so finally, a third way to reduce, reduce the diamond conflict is to recycle your diamonds. Plenty of pawn shops have already mined stones sitting in rings that can be recycled. You can tear them apart and make new ones. You can also ask your relatives. There are plenty of diamonds sitting in jewelry boxes that are not being used. This is one way to create your own special kind of piece. So after a decade of learning, fabricating, and designing countless pieces of jewelry, I decided that diamonds are just beautiful rocks. But what it takes to get those diamonds to the store is pointless and very problematic. It's not that I don't like diamonds, I just like people more. So as it turns out, the universe did have a different plan for me. I sucked it up and I let my passion carve my path. And for that, I am grateful. So the next time you want a new piece of jewelry, consider your options and remember the journey, take, journey a diamond takes to the store. Thank you.